Main Character Syndrome Noun A mental attitude in which you believe everything is and should be about you. You know the people. The kid that always roleplays themselves as more powerful than every other kid. TikTokers doing their dances in public spaces like other people don't exist. The guy who makes YouTube videos reacting to reality TV like his opinion is somehow unique and worthy of your attention. These self-centered people may be annoying to deal with, but it takes a truly special individual to really elevate main character syndrome to truly toxic levels. Enter Gabe's sister, Monica. In the last few episodes, we've seen Monica chastise Gabe for having the audacity to get engaged without telling her first, talk down to his fiance Isabel like she's a child, and she even ruined the wedding that she insisted she be extremely involved in. She seems to have a knack for making everything about her, but is she really just toxic and self-centered and incapable of letting anyone else have the spotlight? Or is there something else going on? We begin our less than humble story a few episodes back where Gabe reveals to Monica and their mom about his engagement and upcoming wedding. How do we think somebody with main character syndrome will handle that? I'm gonna get married. You're getting married? Yes. You didn't tell me. Your brother, your only sibling, just got engaged. Shouldn't you let this moment be about him? Nah, Monica don't play like that. Remember, she's the main character, not Gabe. Wow, you're an asshole for not telling me. I could tell you I'm happy for you, but I think my minor feeling of annoyance is more important to act on in this moment than your big happy news. Yeah, now that I think about it, this isn't about you and your engagement. This is about me and my feelings. That's how I took it, at least, but we can give her a pass on this one. Maybe she didn't mean it like that, or she was just shocked and it slipped out, so I'll give her a pass and we can keep watching. Did you propose? Yes. Wow, what did you didn't tell us. <laughs> yeah, you didn't tell us. Did you give her a ring? Yes. Okay. Are you serious? Right. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Eh, it's not looking much better. A good friend is someone you can share good news with and bad news with. You want someone to support you when you're down and celebrate you when you have good news to share. That's uh, not the vibe I'm getting from Monica. Oh, you're getting married to the love of your life that supports you and defends you and loves you for who you are? I'm so happy for you. By the way, I couldn't help but notice that the mom seems to be taking Monica's lead with the criticism. She doesn't seem to really mean it or have a lot of negativity in her heart like Monica does, but I think that the mom's passivity could be an early indicator to suggest how Monica may have ended up this way. But we'll talk more about that later. So maybe that's not the response Gabe wanted to hear, but I suppose in Monica Monica's defense, being told like that could sting a bit, right? It kind of hurt, like, I'm gonna get emotional. It kind of hurts, from my point of view, me and Gabe are best friends, and the fact that Gabe is hiding his proposal from me makes me feel as though he doesn't value our relationship. Obviously, I love him so much, and I want to be there for him, and I want to be a part of it. That makes sense. If it were me, I might be thinking like, I thought we were close enough that you would have told me earlier, but since you didn't tell me earlier, maybe you're telling me that we're not as close as I thought we were. I thought we were nine out of 10 close, but maybe you're telling me now that we're actually only seven out of 10 close. And to feel that two point difference can hurt. So we can all agree that the feeling makes sense, right? I thought since the rest of this video, I'm gonna be going pretty hard into Monica, I really wanted to defend her feelings early on and say I totally understand how she could feel. And feelings are cool, so I don't wanna judge her at all for how she feels. But I can absolutely judge her for how she handles it. She could have just tolerated those feelings for two minutes and let Gabe have his moments, but no. That would require her to recognize that she's not the main character all the time. Instead, she pouts about it, calls him an asshole, and immediately turns the conversation away from Gabe and his engagement to the love of his life towards how she feels a little hurt. And that's kind of selfish. Can you tell him how you feel after you celebrate with him a bit? Or can you tell him in a way that doesn't rain on his parade? Can you think about other people before acting for yourself? This is exactly the response Gabe expected, by the way. There's a reason he didn't tell her earlier. Because apparently, 
she does this shit all the time. I know Monica in particular is gonna have some negative comments. Monica tends to overanalyze everything and tries to find things wrong with the women that I'm with. I never go to Monica for anything because she's just gonna criticize me. It's not out of her character to act like this. This would be one thing if Monica was not aware of how her actions affected the feelings of other people. But Gabe tells her all the time that she's overly critical and makes him feel bad. How critical are you with everybody I dated? Monica knows she's overly critical, but it's okay because I'm critical, but I'm accurate. Gabe shouldn't have to be scared to tell his family that he's really close with good news. But he is scared because according to Gabe, it's in Monica's character to be negative, find problems with, and criticize Gabe for everything he says and does. If that's true, then yeah, I wouldn't tell her anything either. But unfortunately it gets worse because Monica's critical nature doesn't just hurt Gabe's feelings, but hurts Isabel's too. Before we get to that, I need to go over this scene where Gabe and Isabel talk about the wedding plans. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's interesting, I swear, because we find out that Monica, despite not really showing any confidence or enthusiasm in their relationship, insisted she'd be both the best man lady person and the person to give Gabe away to Isabel, whatever that's called. But is this trabajo de tu mamá, no? Mi madre dice, okay, sí, Monica. No sé. Es la vida de Monica. At first, I didn't think too much about it. It's kind of weird that Gabe's mom is coming too, so why not just let her do it? But I guess if everyone's okay with it, then, you know, whatever, right? But I think it takes a certain kind of person to want to do both roles. Wouldn't you feel a bit uncomfortable being too involved in someone else's wedding? I don't want to accidentally dominate a group conversation either, or give someone a $100 gift when everyone else is giving them a $20 gift. I just feel weird when things are too about me. But then again, I don't have main character syndrome. Except on this YouTube channel where I politely demand that you pay attention to me uh, every video. So I wonder, why does she want to do both? Does she want more attention? Is she trying to control the situation? Is she just trying to get her steps in for the day? What is it? Okay, now that we clarified the wedding thing, because that'll come up later, let's look at how Monica's main character syndrome affects Isabel too. Take this scene for instance, where Monica first meets Isabel at the airport in Colombia. Unfortunately, Isabel doesn't speak English, and Monica doesn't speak Spanish, so communicating might be difficult. But despite neither of them speaking each other's language, Monica kind of acts like that's more Isabel's fault than hers. Do you speak in your Spanish? Um, hola. Hi. Ooh! Oh, okay! <laughs> we don't speak no English. A little, a little bit. Did anyone else find this patronizing? It's subtle, and it's hard to show without replaying the whole episode and showing their interactions, but I felt like Monica had this air of, you're beneath me until proven otherwise. A judgmental aura, if you will, where you just kind of feel bad about yourself when you're around them. I thought I was reading into it too much at first, but turns out Isabel thought so too. Siento que Monica quiere incomodarme por el tema del inglés. Then they go to dinner and it's pretty awkward. Monica just kind of grills Isabel about getting a prenup for the 10th time while Gabe just kind of sits there uncomfortably. Isabel handles it very well, staying calm and respectful, but Monica just can't let up. It doesn't make sense that you're so willing to just go ahead and sign. Are you being honest with me? Are you being honest with me? You're not my dad. Why are you talking to me like that? Now this could be from the editing, but it just looks like Monica keeps finding ways to insert herself into every situation. Everyone needs to know what she thinks. If they don't agree with her, then they're wrong. And she seems to feel justified being as abrasive as she wants because I'm doing it because I care. And as annoying and insufficient as that is as an excuse, I don't think she's lying. I'm very overprotective of Gabe. We have always just had each other, and so we want to know that he's taken care of while he's in Colombia. It makes me very happy to know that he has a home with your family. She is really coming from a place of love. I don't know how I feel about that. On one hand, I'm sure she does care about his well-being. I don't think she's psychopathic. On the other hand, given everything else we've seen, it does kind of feel like fake crying, doesn't it? She is really coming from a place of love, but it's just... Sometimes she's so hard on me, but then sometimes she'll be nice. So I'm just so confused all the time about where I stand with her. To be clear, I'm not accusing her of fake crying, but for some reason, I'm not fully buying it. 
and I can't help but feel a little suspicious that this might be a little manipulative. This feels similar to the first scene we looked at, where Monica reacted poorly to Gabe's engagement because she was a little hurt. I'm sure she was hurt, and I'm sure she is concerned for him, but it's normal to have more than one motivation at a time. Maybe when she's crying, she's 40% scared and looking out for Gabe, while the other 60% might be, I don't know, projecting her own insecurities onto the situation and trying to control everything. Just a random example, by the way. Totally not what I think is going on with Monica. Heck, maybe it's 80% concern for Gabe and 20% her own crap. Either way, when she cries in the restaurant and says, I'm just looking out for my brother, I think the reason why I don't fully buy it is because I'm sensing that there's more to it than that. So do I think that she's looking out for her brother? Yes. Do I think that she's acting this way purely out of the love in her heart? No, I don't. And that brings us to the final nail in the proverbial coffin, how Monica ruins the wedding. The day before the wedding, Gabe and Monica are waiting for Isabel, who's doing some last minute wedding stuff on the day before her wedding. How selfish of her. When Monica starts telling Gabe, well, you shouldn't be marrying somebody if you're afraid to talk to her. Which is kind of funny since Gabe's told Monica multiple times that she's the one he's afraid to talk to and not his wife. But anyway, in response, Gabe tells Monica, hey, maybe you're the only one making all these problems all the time, which was apparently enough for Monica to say she's not going to her brother's wedding anymore. She's not going to the wedding anymore after a little fight like that? Why? It could be that she's saying, fine, if all I do is cause you problems all the time, then I'll just leave and you won't have to deal with me anymore. Hmm. That's certainly a possibility. I mean, that's that's how a 10 year old would act. That's pretty mature. Protesting like that doesn't really take any accountability for your actions. And it's kind of just a manipulative way of guilt tripping them, as opposed to considering the possibility that maybe Gabe's feelings have some validity and maybe she has some responsibility in how her actions can affect the feelings of other people. But I don't think that's why she says she's not going to the wedding. If I had to guess, I think it's more likely that she was just hurt from the fight and already feels a bit unwanted from Gabe not telling her about the marriage earlier and maybe just feels bad about the whole situation and just doesn't want to go. And if that is how she felt, honestly, I could understand that. But you should still go to the wedding. You flew across the globe to be here on your brother's special day. You know, the one where you insisted on being both the best man, lady, person, and the person to give Gabe away. You wanted to be overly involved. You feel the need to criticize and nitpick all of his relationships. You project your unsolicited feelings onto their relationship. Now he tells you to knock it off and quit causing drama, and you just go, fine, I'm done, bye. Assuming she's not just guilt tripping him and manipulating him into apologizing for defending himself and his fiance, and she really just feels hurt about the fight, so what? Part of growing up and taking responsibility for yourself is recognizing how your actions impact the lives of other people. And part of being a good person is knowing when to put your feelings aside temporarily and be there to support someone else. This is why her crying over how worried she is for Gabe felt fake. Because if her only motivation was looking after Gabe, then I think she'd try her best to put her feelings aside for one day and go, you know what, we may fight, we may butt heads, but I love him. And at the end of the day, I want him to have a special wedding day with the support of his family. So as hurt as I am, today's about him and I'm gonna be there to support him. But no, even his wedding is another opportunity for her to make things all about Monica again. Well, actually, I, I, I kind of do think that she'll end up going to the wedding and she'll be supportive and smiling and Gabe will cry and it'll be a nice, sweet, happy moment for everyone. It is a TV show after all, and I guess this whole thing could be exaggerated or played up for TV or edited in a certain way to make her look bad. I guess by the time you're watching this, the next episode will be out and you know we'll know what happens. Editor James here. Um, boy, was I wrong about that one. If you've seen my other videos, you know I like to try to understand the origins of the behavior and try to see things from all sides, so I want to do that with Monica too. It seems like Monica has a very Monica-centric personality. The more Monica something has, the better it is. Gabe, the relationship, the wedding, they'd all be better off if I was more involved. Some people equate this kind of main character syndrome with narcissism, and although I admit it can sound like that on the surface, I don't think that she actually has narcissistic personality disorder. It doesn't feel to me like she thinks she's better than everyone else, per se. It just feels like she doesn't think that much about everyone else. When I was researching main character syndrome, I found this insider.com article showcasing the four signs that you might have main character syndrome. Those four signs are, everything is about you and your problems. Check. 
you frame yourself and your life as perfect. Maybe I'm forgetting something, but I don't recall seeing any evidence of that directly. I guess she did say, I'm critical, but I'm accurate, which is kind of like saying I'm always right. And the way she talked down to Isabel about the English thing, and maybe the are you lying to me thing, I do feel like she kind of presents herself as being above other people. So maybe you aren't good at taking criticism. Well, clearly, uh, otherwise she'd go to the wedding. But then we get to the last sign that you might have main character syndrome. You feel out of control in your everyday life, so you try to take the reins back as the main character. And that is interesting, and it makes sense. Again, who knows what the real Monica is like, but maybe you grow up without a lot of stability or a sense of control, and you don't like that, and you don't feel safe. So in order to feel safe as an adult, you feel a somewhat pathological urge to control everything in your surroundings. I think with our modern understanding of psychology, I think we can safely say that that is a thing. And if you feel an urge to control everything, maybe you'd nitpick your brother's relationships because the unknown is too scary. Maybe you're scared about the wedding, so you feel safer if you become overly involved in it. Or maybe you feel an urge to turn attention towards you and away from other people that you can't control. Of course, this is all just my speculation, but then I remember how passively the mom acts. She seems nice, but she seems to go along with everything and doesn't take an active role in a whole lot. I don't know what their family life was like, of course, but knowing it was just the three of them and they had a sort of us against the world mentality, I could imagine a scenario where Monica could have been parentified early in life with too much responsibility and maybe had to take control and whip impulsive Gabe into shape. Perhaps Gabe's role in the family was to underfunction in times of stress and regress into this sort of childlike, impulsive person, where Monica's role in the family is to overfunction and to be more of the parents and to be more nagging or finger wagging towards impulsive little Gabe. Perhaps that kind of early life chaos and parentification could create somebody who really does care about their brother and wants to take care of them, but who may also feel an unhealthy need to control everything. And maybe if that need to control everything was deep enough and pathological enough, that that motivation is going to win over going to the wedding. Another explanation for the psychology nerds out there could be from family systems therapy that hypothesizes that people within a family system will work to maintain a sort of status quo and will actively resist a change to that system. So if we go with that, it could be that Gabe getting married poses too much danger to the stability of the family system, which could cause an immune system-like response to prevent that change from happening. Maybe that's why Monica is seemingly trying to sabotage the relationship as best she can, to keep the status quo of Gabe being the impulsive, unrealistic one that needs to be reined in all the time. If that idea interests you at all, by the way, Dr. Honda from Psychology in Seattle has a few amazing videos videos on family systems therapy and talks about Andre and Libby from the previous season if you remember them. So if you're interested, I'll post one of those videos in the comment below and you can go check it out. So in summary, maybe she's a control freak that just needs everything to be about her, even to Gabe's detriment. Or maybe she's stuck trying to maintain the status quo of the family by keeping Gabe in his place. Or maybe she's just a self-centered asshole, man, <laughs> I don't know. You tell me in the comments below. What do you think? If you like this video, you'll definitely like this video I made on Nicole and Mahmoud, or check out my 90 Day Fiancé playlist right here.